And what is going on, everybody? Welcome to You Can't Say That, episode number 21. We have myself, Joy, and Sam working remotely, practicing our social distancing from one another. Or at least that's the excuse we're going to make to not be near our neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. Sorry, I don't have my stuff together. <laughs> we are here. Tisk tisk. Make it happen. <laughs> so many windows. That's why I gotta get the other monitor. <laughs> Listen, man, make sure you have a fourth window because we gotta try to get somebody to call in today. Dude, I'm ahead of you. Ooh. Let's see if I can get cousin CJ to come join. I think it's his birthday today too. Hmm. I was, um I was sharing this with Joy before the podcast started, but today was the one year anniversary of that guy being shot in state college um so it was just an interesting thing we talked about it maybe two three podcasts ago and uh today's the anniversary and it sucks because there's no one here because i know if there were people here that something would be done let's check twitter gotta check twitter i wonder how many people forgot um, about it because they're not here yeah um Let's, Let's uh, think about what it is. Well, we've already thought about what it is, what we want to talk about today. I guess really, I think what would be really nice would be to um, take some oh. okay. questions and see if we, anybody, certainly if anybody wants to call in, that would be really nice. But I think it'd be nice to take a few questions. Um just a little well, bit about what's been going on. Next week, class will be back to normal. Not normal, but, you know, we'll be doing some um, activities and making some things happen. And that'll be pretty cool. Um, I think valuable, like just get back to a sense of stasis and stability. And um, and then we'll just see where we go from there. Uh, but... Yesterday's class was cool. We had a lot of people calling in from all over the place. Ten- and it's kind of it's cool to see that Tennessee, Africa, uh, New Orleans. There are some really awesome places. Yeah, it's it's interesting to kind of to really get a sense of who is, um, you know, who's who's watching the stream, right? And uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. It's nice, man. Um, I think that it's for me. I'm. I'm still. You know, this is this class piece. I'm still really trying to get my my feet under me as to how to do this, right? Just for myself. Um, but you know, Jeff, definitely, you've been holding it down, and I and I think it'd be really nice. We need to get some more sort of back channel. Um, help so we'll bring Darnisha in and then Joy we'll just Darnisha. figure a way out in which we can like hold things together so um, Joy's been doing a I think lot from, uh, what's I that? said Joy's been doing a lot she one one night she put on Snapchat at like 9 o'clock and she was like whoops that was a 13 hour day and I was like what are you what <laughs> it's crazy i do and i it's hard because my memory i can't remember i can't tell you what i was doing 30 minutes ago and i sit back and i try to remember what i did because the list will be short and i'm like what did i do but when i'm here it starts with the 8 30 meeting even when sometimes i'm like i i don't got nothing to do till noon i'm gonna go back to sleep that shit don't happen i sit here and something just pulls me in and all day if i don't get up to like get something to eat or go to the bathroom everything i'm doing is wink stuff i'm either talking to someone or i'm looking at documents (laughs) why do you think my calendar is looks the way that it does that's so i don't forget what i've done throughout the day (laughs) and what i need to get done that's why yeah, I did the other it's... night I was like, does it are we still trying to not log more than eight hours a day? Like physically, as far as like how we turn it in to the university. We're not supposed to put in more than eight hours. And I'm like, well, this is weird. Like I was at 40 yesterday. <laughs> Dude, just keep it at 40. I think it's then, yeah, I think it's I think a lot of people are finding this. Um, 
you know, working from home, it's just work sort of just seeps into your, uh, into life, right? Like this, I think I sent Jeff that email at about four in the morning with a video about Italy that I just woke up and I was just scrolling through, uh, just trying to find some things, you know, thinking about class in some new ways. So I just think that that's kind of, that's what's going to happen. Hey, um, let's, I think it's going to work. I think really, it seems to me that this, uh, these Friday um, conversations are really need um, some, to, we need to push off of some things from the Tuesday, Thursday class. And I think there'll be a lot more to push off of as we get going. Um, one thing uh, from yesterday is uh, just, first off, what, what I think what stood out is just, the we the the number of sort of different questions that people had and different perspectives and I think that's you know super valuable right to see that people are really interested in thinking about these issues um, and then also the you know the number of people who are watching the the class who are not in the class is is somewhat uplifting for me, you know, that people are really, you know, people are taking the class without being in it, so to speak. So, um, yeah, that feels really cool. And, um, and then just the questions, like people are really thinking about these issues, right. And wanting to think about them. So, uh, I, I guess for me as a, as an instructor that feels like it's something, um, motivational, I guess, is what I would say. It makes me want to really continue to think through some things in some a lot deeper ways. So that's my initial sort of response. And, and maybe that's a good sign for where we're going, meaning that we can just kind of keep the, keep the process going and of, of thinking and imagining and, um, you know, bringing people together across these different boundaries to to think together, as Lori would say. So well, what's interesting is that you brought up work life integration and Arnika said that she did it for six years. And uh, next week on the Rona Conversation social media channels, we're going to be putting out a video. I talked to Sheffy and interviewed her. Sheffy is one of our um, employees who's been working remotely for eight years. And I asked her about that and she was like, listen, when you're working from home, if there's something at home that needs to get done that you wouldn't do in the office, then just don't do it. She's like, I don't worry about the dishes. I don't worry about the laundry. I don't worry about the mess that the kids make until after I'm done with my shifts because you have to have that separation or else you're just going to be working 24 seven on everything. Yeah, It's crazy. Yeah. I think that's kind of, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck with it. I think I generally just integrate everything and find myself working 24-7 yeah, and not having stuff. kids. Yeah, it's easier. It's just easier for me because also being a teacher, I, 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 just given the nature of my work, my mind never shuts down. If my mind doesn't shut down, then my work doesn't shut down. My, so no matter where I am, I'm coming up with some new my question, something. My right? question for you is, are you still having your banana bread sandwiches every day? No, I'm not, actually. No, I haven't had one all week. Whoa. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Lori's thing. And she hasn't had it every day either. So I don't know what that's, what that's going to be. But if anyone's, if you're wondering, Lori has about 25 years ago, um, really fine tuned a recipe for banana bread with no sugar in it and just the, the sugar from the bananas. And, um, it's really dense and heavy and really good. And she puts a lot of peanut butter on it and that becomes her meal every day, every day for two decades. That's her meal, her lunch, I should say. So, uh, Hey, so what, um, what, what should, let's, um, I don't know, like what, que what questions do we have? Because I, I really, I don't have anywhere in particular to go. I, I, you know, we, we kind of talked about, we've, we've talked about the virus a little bit. Lori and I continue to talk about it. I continue to be stumped as to, you know, what this is, what's going on. I have no idea. I just can't. 
wrap my thoughts around it. The, the numbers don't stack up um, as to how, how it is that this is the thing for which we've literally disrupted the entire global economy. Um, I don't, I, I don't, there's no, I, there's no conspiracy going on. This isn't like some deep, um, deep seated thing by some invisible force. Um, it's just fascinating that the chips would fall in this way. I, in my humble opinion, I don't, you know, um, the chips would fall in this way that things would, um, that, that, that people would just make these really quick, rash, big decisions that would lead to where we're at right now. And I, I'm, I'm stunned by it, right? It happened so fast and, um, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, right? I need, I need more data. I think everybody probably needs more data. No, everybody does need more data. But I, I, yeah, I don't comprehend. I don't understand. So um, I'm really at a loss. And that's probably a good place to be, right? Because when something as complicated as this is, um, there are no easy, there are no answers, first off. And there certainly are no easy answers. And um, nobody knows. Nobody has the exact understanding. Um, it's far too complex. Uh, and I generally have this idea that a lot of things happen because of unintended consequences that, um, you know, you, you, we make these decisions and then the decision leads to another decision and another decision, right? It's sort of like Penn State made this decision, our university to close shop for three weeks. And, you know, you can't predict what that's going to look like ahead of time. There's just no way until you start getting feedback from all of the offices and employees around campus. And then as it's about midway through the first week, after about three days of feedback, you start to get a sense of like, okay, hang on, this is what this is going to entail. And so if we call it three weeks and then we're going to come back for face-to-face -face contact for the final four weeks or five weeks of the semester, um, what that would entail. So we're going to, we're going to turn directions here and then like, Oh, wait, hang on. In three weeks, we're going to come back and keep going. I think that once we started getting the feedback on that, it, it, my guess is people started to see the bigness of it. And certainly at world in conversation, even in social 19 and world in conversation, I see how massive that is. Like what a, what a big deal it would be to actually turn our entire ship in this other direction and then turn it back. I, I don't know how we actually could have done that. And so I'm wondering if I'm thinking sociologically and system wise that, that if that's not kind of what's going on at the global level, right? Like people start making decisions and then that decision reveals another complex set of factors and forces for which people need to about which people need to respond. And then that reveals something else. And then before we know it, we're in this place where the entire global economy is, is grinding to some kind of a, and, and going in a new direction. So it's utterly mind blowing to think that we're in the middle of this right now, something that the world in some ways has never seen, you know? Yep. Okay. That's my beginning. Definitely my, but uh, has never seen anything like this, and it's fascinating. So I'm going to go ahead and put up um, the slide for um, John Hopkins University. I just sent this to you in the chat. John Hopkins University has a live map of all the cases that have been confirmed, all the deaths, and all the recoveries. And obviously it is astounding that of the 254,653 confirmed cases, that over 87,000 of them are are recovered fine um, there are mm -hmm. but the, the other thing is number one it's it's the the amount the number of cases the how far it's gone and the permanent impact on the person because this is a virus that attacks you to a point where your lungs, even if you recover, your lungs could still have permanent ramifications because of it. 
and that's where I'm interested in seeing where the long term situation is going to come out of this. But um, the crazy thing to me is I wonder what Italy has done because Italy has uh, about 40,000 less cases than China, but they officially have 300 more deaths. And I want to know, is it because of the age of the population? Is it because of how far around the country it is? Like, I want to mm. know why they have so many more deaths than China does. And then um, and Iran has the third most deaths, but they have the second most recovery, which is mm. interesting. Because <laughs> just the way in which we think about Italy versus Iran, we think of them in two completely different ways. And... And it's interesting yeah. the fact that Iran is doing better, or at least reportedly yeah. doing better. And I'm also interested in seeing, because in the United States right now we're like sixth or something. We're one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're sixth behind Germany with 14,000 cases. But that's before all of our testing can come in. So I'm very interested in after the cases coming through on how many more people will be confirmed to have it. So a, a I'm quick thought it's on people's that. people's choice. Or resource. I'm thinking it's between people's choice and what the resources are. Like I believe, I don't know if Iran they have healthcare nationwide. We were talking about it in a dialogue yeah. earlier, but I think that student was from Kuwait. Um, yeah. And also, like just thinking about my own family, like if my grandmother got sick, I just know for some demographics of people, they don't like going to the doctors. Yeah. Or it's just not, that's not the first thing they think to do um, and trusting yeah. in or whatever that history is behind whether they're going to do it sooner rather than later. Yep. And, and then a lot of people, so, it's also where, whether it's they think about their cost or not. It, like I'm talking to a friend right now who thinks he's sick and I'm like, go. And I'm, I don't want to hear shit about you don't have health insurance. Just go. Well, yeah. but, the, yeah. but the thing is, when you go to hospitals, unless if you're extremely sick, the, the yeah, hospitals, I told them to call beforehand. Yeah, the hospitals. I think that's what they want people to do is to call and describe symptoms. Well, even even if the case, number one, they don't have they there's almost no hospital that has the testing kits and second off there's almost nothing that they can do i ran in 2017 mm -hmm. about 90 percent of I'm sorry uh, about 90 percent of iranians have some form of health insurance and it's okay. the only country mm -hmm. in the world with le legal organ trade so what's italy like health care <laughs> well you can pull so that up so, like, so that's what things, i'm thinking right? for the rates yeah. it could be those yeah two factors. Maybe some more, but so I, I'm, I want to respond to something that um, universal. It, it looks like Italy put up. Okay. So one thing is that the the Italian, the median age in Italy is about forty, and whereas in a place like Colombia, let's say where Lori and I just were, the median age is I think twenty seven or twenty eight, and that has a huge <coughs> impact, um, because of far more far greater number of people who are older are going to get sick and then that's going to have an impact on the the death rate or mortality rate um and, but but again you know i'm really curious um in a, it in a couple years when when things have settled and the data come back um, people are able to collect the kind of data that we're really now not able to collect um, and look back on it and really see what the story of this is. It'll be fascinating to see, um, yeah, what it is. But Elif made as is asking the question about refugee populations, and this is, you know, yesterday in class I briefly mentioned the ways and one way in which, while the virus, you know, affects human beings. Um, you know, in similar ways. I mean, you know, I actually want to kind of take go a little further on that. Almost across the board, people with less means are going to be impacted by things like this, right? So, what people with more money and resources are healthier across just to start with, right? So, you know, you want to not get the virus or not get sick or not have it impact you, and in such a grave way, we'll be healthier, right? Like eat better, rest better, all the things you would do to not get a flu, or if you get a flu, your body naturally fights it off. Um, and there are some flus where your body has a harder time fighting it off. But obviously, you know, 
everything, right? Just so take care of yourself. So healthier people are going to be better off. And if they do get sick, their bodies are going to respond. I mean, not in every case, obviously, because there are a lot of complex factors that come into play, but in, in, in more often than not, your body's going to respond in more positive and forceful ways, right? So that means people with more means are, are they're starting ahead of the game with just a kind of a stronger biological disposition. Um, but uh, which, and, but there are other sociological factors, right? So people with greater means are going to be more likely to be able to distance themselves from other people. You know, if you're poor, you're going to, you're going to be more people and likely living under your roof. Um, you're going to ha- be coming into contact with greater numbers, numbers of people, um, in a wide range of ways. So, you know, think of like even the really getting into things like refugee communities. Yesterday I gave the example of Haiti, but, you know, people in, in communities, in places where I've been in Haiti in many, many places, you know, you have many, you know, several entire families sleeping on one bed, um, in, in really, uh, so in poor communities like that. So you have, you know, imagine that, like you're, you're going to get sick. And so if the, if a virus like this, or when it does sweep through a community, it really has a just a detrimental impact. Um, Haiti, so Haiti has two confirmed uh, cases, um, neither of which are in Port-au-Prince right now. So that's the good news. It's not in Port-au-Prince, but it's it's still in Haiti somewhere. It's like mm-hmm. it's like well, north east or northwest yeah. of Port-au-Prince. So so then so now imagine refugee communities where we see a very similar kind of thing, right? I think about refugee camps where I have been. Um, and, you know, people are just in close to close contact with one another. And, uh, you know, that, the, you know, this sort of thing is just has such a, uh, a, a really negative, I mean, it just has such a detrimental effect on it. It's so many levels. So that's kind of problematic. It's very problematic. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I think that Sam Driscoll is saying about Italian news channels. Yeah. I mean, Italy is a very an, an <coughs> aging population. And, and, and at the same time, um, it'll be interesting. On Tuesday in class, we're going to speak with a woman from Italy um, and see what, what, her, what, what she has to say and what her take is. It'll be really interesting. So that will be our report from the field um on tuesday yeah i love Uh, that we're doing that to be honest that's a great idea because again like um i remember when h1n1 came through the united states what in 2008 or something 2012 maybe and i started in it started i think in 2009 2009 right right when obama the administration first started yeah yeah and and it's crazy because I didn't like I knew obviously swine flu. Everyone talked about swine flu, but I know maybe two people who had it in its entirety, and they got very sick. But there was almost there were very low cases of death. But then I don't think the I wonder how many people in the world got it because I know a couple, millions of Americans did. There were multiple millions of Americans, but only a select few died. And I think what you were saying about. Um, the refugee camps, it's extremely important to note that in the United States, celebrities are able to go and pay for the tests without any symptoms. And so, like, there was a lot of complaints. People very mad at um, Caitlyn Jenner right now because Caitlyn Jenner had no symptoms but yet was able to get the test, and then it came back negative. But then there are people who are going to hospitals feeling like they're going to die and it's like well sorry we don't have enough and it's just like hold on it's just really showing the disparity among um, among economic differences with this virus yeah well yeah i think it's um yeah man i I can't that's just the, the world is just endlessly broken up into the haves and have nots and i guess that's where it's incumbent upon 
institutions to step in and try to equalize that at some level. I think somebody asked Trump about it and Trump was like, well, it's just the way it is. And people are like, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. That's exactly how it is. It's just yeah. not how it should be, but should and are are two different things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, I, I, Vic, well, hey, Vicky, it, that is not, what we do. It, there's, listen, man, there's one thing about saying it's just the way it is. I mean, it's the way it is and being and resigning oneself to that. It's another thing to say, well, it's the way it is, but not necessarily resigning oneself, you know. And so as I, I find myself, as the years go on, I, I there's a certain kind of res understanding of the nature of social systems and power and 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 stratification that are it's just like well everywhere I turn this is what I see and but that doesn't mean that I and at some level I accept it because I can't fight against things that are right you know what I mean like a, a tree is a tree I can't want it to be a a vine and um, but it doesn't mean that I'm not finding my these the subtle ways in which I can to try to undermine things but it's a fine line, man. It's just finding that balance. Um, um, Canada has had 12 people die from wait, the virus. Wait, I want to, hey, wait, can you respond to Lauren? I want to look at Lauren Kelly saying racism. Oh, my God. Asians are friendly. They, yeah, listen, man. So, Lauren, here, let me respond to that. Um, there's actually a, a lot of, there's a lot of racism in Asia, uh, in Asian cultures and um there's a lot of ethnocentrism like a, a lot of ethnocentrism so le look it's not people have this idea you know we talk about ethnocentrism and racism and so on as though it's just like this american thing right europeans and americans because that's just like in in vogue right like it becomes the hip woke thing to do so to speak to just critique white people on the racism because you know it's just it's easy to do and it's it's how we roll but um but the fact is there's uh there's r racism we, we don't have to call ethnocentrism we can call it any number of things prejudice uh, prejudice against other cultures other peoples um ethnocentrism fear of other cultures other peoples um all over the world and uh, there's a lot of it in 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 Asian cultures. So I wouldn't say it that in that way, like, Hey, they're, they're getting a taste of their own medicine. I just, I wouldn't say that, but I think what I would say would be because a Asians certainly have it been not only have not only been the, uh, the cause or have been embodied a lot of ethnocentrism or dished it and dished it or given it out or, but they've also received a lot of it. So both from, from the West and from other cultures and so on. So, um, I wouldn't say it that way, but I would say it that I would say, well, it's kind of interesting that these things just keep coming around in circles. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, in the United States, you, you, when you think about the racism that was experienced by people of Chinese ancestry in the late 19th century throughout the 19th century but in particular the later half of the 19th century is pretty pretty severe and you know not you we don't talk about it or hear about it on the east coast but it, but on the west coast very severe man. and right up through the the first half of the 20th century right so we kind of jump ahead to the um to world war ii and the internment camps for Japanese Americans and Japanese immigrants of and in, in, in which we also put many people, many a people of Asian ancestry who were not Japanese. Um, but really the whole first part of the century, a lot of discrimination against Asians. So, um, but again, it happens in, in Asian cultures. So I, I think let's not pretend that that's not part of it. And I think that what happens a lot is, people who have never 
traveled and never experienced other other cultures um, oftentimes are very limited in their worldview and thinking that these things only some things only apply to the West and to white people um, and that I find kind of troubling um, so it's yeah. uh, it's just um, it's interesting like we we definitely do think of racism well we categorize racism different than prejudice and discriminatory and we also try to differentiate between our racism and other culture ra racism but it's interesting how this isn't like you're correct it's not just one culture or one place in the world that has this racism it's it's all over the place like mm. this is something that's well, it's been because it's a form it's one of the most basic forms of tribalism in which you're different from me therefore i can't trust you therefore i don't like you and it's interesting to see well it well, evolve. Okay. okay so listen on the chat i see that lauren says something about how her black friend was treated so what i would say is that um some of the what's behind what's identified what we would say is like really ignorant behavior stereotypical prejudice racist discriminatory on it however we want to say it um what's behind it or what's really drives it can be kind of very different things right um meaning that sometimes it's just pure it, it's like a complete lack of knowing right so um like in I, I've read a fair amount about um, racism against black and brown people in Japan, for example, because it's just something that I was really intrigued by for a while. And a lot of it is the cause. It's n it's a different kind of, it's not like a, it's like this only almost like, like very simplistic ignorance. Like what? Like just almost like a, we've never seen anybody. So, oh my gosh, you know, um, sometimes, uh, it's, it's more identified as being a problem of the foreigner. Um, it's, I, it's just, I, it's hard for me to really put it. It'd be fascinating to talk to somebody who really studies this in depth, but what is, what are the mechanisms in the mind that are happening that are triggering this, um, differential, um, treatment of people? Um, we just label it as, as racist. But racism, you, you have to, you can cut it up. I'm not in any way saying it, it it's better or worse or whatever. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even going to walk into that. I'm just walking into the complexity of it. Um, yeah. Right now, because of the many, many more Americans, let's just take Japan as an example, because just of sports, right? Because many more American baseball players are just take baseball, right? It's huge in Japan, more and more baseball players, uh, Americans are, and, and Hispanics are going to Japan to play in the Japanese leagues. And so a lot of times, and I was talking to some um, black colleagues who travel to Japan, a lot of times people will think, oh, you must be a baseball player or something. So then they're actually treated very differently because, you know, baseball players are idols, but, but it's not, yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Okay. So what else do we have, man? Hmm. Um, you know, it just going to Japan or it just in places just like, you know, not only fairly recently, even just signs up. It's like, don't we, we don't serve certain people. Right. It's like crazy stuff, but not everywhere. Right. More, more It's kind of like we were talking like Lubna was talking yesterday about Lebanon. Um, and as we see everywhere. Right. It's much more areas where there's not a lot of diversity of culture, diversity of people, diversity of thought. And then we see much more narrow minded thinking. And it's very similar here in the United States. Um, similar, it's the same everywhere, right? Metropolitan living, multicultural living, cross cultural living, like, you know, coming up against or coming to coming up against ideas and people who are different from oneself um, leads to a, a, a more 
open mind or greater curiosity. You can't, you know, you can't meet somebody who's really, you know, like I think about the first time I met somebody in a, not, not a hijab, but in a cob where her full face was covered. And I was having a conversation with her and realizing, my God, like, how do you have a conversation with someone whose entire face is covered and all I could see was her were her eyes and we were talking about feminism by the way and she was quite a feminist I would argue no, no, I, she totally was and I think about if I never had that conversation with a woman wearing a niqab with a full face covering um, I would never I, I would just always have a distance, just not have any understanding that the person inside of that head covering, face covering, could be really a complex thinker. I couldn't. Now, I never ever, because of that very first conversation, I never see a woman in in a niqab, a full, again, a full face covering. No, I'm not talking a hijab. I'm talking about face. Um, I never see a woman and don't think, well, she could be a, this is likely as not to be a really interesting thinker and a, a complex, have very complex ideas about relationships between power and men and women. And, and I think, well, that's only because I had that conversation. So I think, well, that's just like the, you know, cosmopolitan, cross-cultural sort of um, sort of linkages between ideas, right? Just meeting people like joy in your nose ring, right? So if you don't have that, you just can't open your mind up. You just can't. Well, hang on. It's really difficult. Um, so... But when you start having those exchanges, it's hard not to open one's mind up. So, um, Joy, what do you, or go ahead. What do we got? Well, I was just going to say it's also interesting when we talk about economics with this virus and we're talking about how, um, you know, the global market is starting to close um, or starting to fall, especially in the United States. For some reason, I just looked on CNN has a really good um, map of different countries and their economies. For some reason, Hong Kong is doing really really well um japan's not doing so hot right now but what's interesting is that a lot of um republicans are now including um senator richard burr are now under fire yeah. for supposedly um getting <laughs> private information about the stock market and then burr <laughs> himself sold 1.6 million dollars of stock right before the crash well, here, though, listen, man, hang on, though, on that. Let me just defend that guy for a second. I know nothing about him. Let me just defend that. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to see, to watch what was rolling for rolling out in China and then watch it move into Europe and say, like, the stock market is really going to crash. You, you do not need to be a rocket scientist for that. No, but, so, he also, but he was also lying to the American public saying, no, we're fine. Our economy is going to be good. But yet he... Well, yeah, of course. That, but you want him to do that. But aunt, lots of people sold. There's any... Lots and lots of people sold their stuff. I would have sold had I owned individual shares, but I don't. It's all tied up in mutual funds. And I already made it Lori and I already made a shift not too long ago to be much more conservative in our in our uh, investments and so I just said well whatever there's not there's really nothing to do right now but I had stock I absolutely would have sold it so that I, I think that I'm just a little bit skeptical on that um, but nonetheless you I mean we can make the argument but I just want to I'm, I'm sure there. I, I probably have a dozen reasons why I don't like the guy, but in that particular case, I, I have to defend him. Yeah. Uh, he put so. out. He put out a statement saying that he's trying to open up. Uh, hold on, let me look at the tweet. Um, he said he relied solely on public news reports to guide my decision regarding the sales of stocks on February 13th. Specifically, I closely followed CNBC's daily health and science reporting out of its Asia bur uh, bureaus at the time, understanding the assumption 
many could uh, make in hindsight. However, I spoke this morning with the chairman of the St uh, Senate Ethics Committee and asked him to open a complete review of the matter of full transparency. So, I mean, if it's like that, then that's that's great. But my, I'm just this virus yeah. and any type of global issue really puts into light the disparities of not only the average person in different classes, but also the, dis the differences between the, those who are running our country and those who are living in our country. And to me, it's just, yeah. it's just very troubling. To well, say the least. I, I think it, I think that's fair, but I think in, at the same time, r wealthy people who are bailing on the stock market, um, this, this would not be a, I don't, I just, Look, man, you you don't have to be very smart to know that the economy is going to dive really seriously. So it doesn't matter what you're saying. Hey, by the way, I want to respond to, to to the Allen 501s comment. Um, who grew up in mainland China and think that most people in China are really ignorant about different races and being racist. Yeah, I I would I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with that in a sense that like you this is part of this thing about understanding the nature of how people's people's minds are operating in different areas of the world right like we've we in the the united states think about different cultures and we have our own way of organizing our minds about different groups, different cultures, different ethnicities. And, you know, like in Western Europe, people have their own way of organizing their minds about cultures and ethnicities and so on, right? It's, it's just not, you can't take, you know, maybe Arnica, you could jump in and uh, maybe, yeah, you could jump in and say something. But like, it's just like the, that kind of Western European mind is not the American mind. It's it's different. And just the subtle way, the, just like, you know, it's like the way you turn certain ideas. And the same is true in people around the world, the way they think about culture and the way they think about race, right? So it's even like in Africa, you know, it's like colorism, as we talk about in Africa, it's just different than colorism among, so in Sub-Saharan Africa, right? colorism in sub-Saharan Africa is different than colorism in the black community in the United States. It's just, it's not the same. And so um, by colorism, I mean just thinking that different sh skin tones or shades are better than or more valuable or more beautiful or whatever than other skin shades. So yeah, I think ah, it's just hard, man, to talk about like Chinese racism, for example, it's like, I don't even know what that means, right? But it, I mean, it means something within the Chinese context, like the way the wayers, or we say in English, Uyghurs, but, you know, I mentioned it yesterday on the, on the class, the way they're seen and treated. It's so, um, yeah. So anyway, um, Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, so Sam Driscoll, I think there's something implicit, like there's a, a piece about skin that you just go back so far about skin tones and the desire for light skin. And it's not just because it's not because it looks European and people want to be Europeans. It's not just because it means people with really white skin or light skin are, it means that they were not of the working class. And so therefore it means they're wealthier and they can, can afford to be out of the sun. It's not that simple either. It is just a mix of lots and lots of different things. This is desire for this really white light skin. It's not just because it's because it mirrors youth and because babies, all babies come out of the womb with lighter skin than they have later in life, right? It's skin pigmentation. So it's like it mirrors that. It mirrors this deep desire for youthfulness. It's just not. It's, it's so complex. Um, so what else do we have, man? 
Um, um, there's some news about maybe deportation being affected. I just saw, I just looked it up on an article. Uh, Arnika brought it to our attention. I just, um, according to Fox, I don't know. I have to look into this a little bit more. But just a quick Google search. Fox said reported two days ago that deportations from ICE are going to be limited right now to try and prevent obviously the spread of the virus. Um, and I think that's true about most things. I am curious about how major cities in the u.s will actually will eventually respond i know that san francisco los angeles some major cities across the country have shut down um and is kind of acting like italy but i'm curious on how the rest of the country is because people are still being idiotic like um i was at giant last week and there was a woman with a clorox wipe wiping down every piece of produce before she put it into a bag and it's like, okay, so we don't need that. <laughs> and then I saw another woman the other night, and she was, she had a, a a mask on, but it wasn't a surgical mask. It was like one that you would use if you were Coachella like, bandana. <laughs> no, it was like it was a crappy one that if you're like collecting dust at your house, it's like the ones that have the little um, oh, metal right. thing across your nose, and you just pinch that, and that's yeah, supposed to yeah, block yeah. it. It's like that's not a surgical mask. Um, that's going to do nothing for you. Dude, that's nothing neat. for you. And then people who wear gloves, like I understand why people want to wear gloves, but gloves also don't do anything for you. No, but it wasn't even that kind of glove. Or um, mask. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars a pop on eBay. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Price gouging is illegal. Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a uh, but but look my friend uh, um people are people are just scared and they're scared and, and not people, informing they're not in, getting informed though they're just yeah we're, to, we're not, the we're first not thing reading. On the well the thing is even yeah. if you read it your fear is going to surpass it because i've been reading about this virus i know the right like i know most likely i'm not going to get it but that doesn't mean that I don't wash my hands 600 times a day. That doesn't mean that I use my sweatshirt to grab onto doorknobs. That doesn't mean that when I'm at the grocery store, yeah. I'm going to keep six feet between me and the person next to me. Because even though I know that the chances, especially in Center County that have zero confirmed cases, I could be the first one. There aren't three confirmed cases. There are zero confirmed cases in Center County. Send me links. Yeah. <laughs> Send you links. What, what we were talking about this, I forget. Oh, JD said. I think JD said this. He has a friend who works wherever the H. Um, and I don't know if it's just not been released yet, and that was just their own little conversation. But apparently three. I don't know. Maybe that'll be released. We'll see. If a number comes up and it's three, that's what that was. But just know that was from like a day or two ago. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's. But either way, still chilling. <laughs> if we want to move past, uh, oh, this is some daily news. Hey, could we? Um, is hey Arnica, if you're on the stream, could you just like jump in really fast? I mean, I'd just be curious to hear what's happening um, in Berlin. I'm assuming you're in Berlin. Could you just w walk us through that? It, you can use the same link that you used before when you came into class. Um, because I'm, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, really fascinated. Um, according to centerdaily.com, um, by the way, if, if you don't know, Center is the name of the county that we live in. So if you don't live in the United States. Yeah, if you live in the United States, your states are divided up into counties, and it's weird how you pronounce it, because if you'd say you're from Center County, no one knows what you're talking about, but if I say I'm from Columbia, Pennsylvania, no one knows, but if I say Lancaster, they do. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, anyway, Center County has joined the growing list of uh, counties in Pennsylvania with presumed cases of the new coronavirus, so there's nothing that that's not confirmed yet, but there might be a presumed one i'm very nervous about this because i'm dating a person who works in the medical field whom mm -hmm. if there is a confirmed case especially in the place of his employment then <laughs> he could be quarantined up to 14 days at work nice oh seriously he could like um they put they had a meeting 
either late last week or early this week where they're like, yeah, if there's a confirmed case in this building, then if you're working, you're not allowed to leave for 14 days. Involuntarily. Uh, Hope we pack the bag. (laughs) I hope they all pack the bag just in case. I mean, I feel like they do that anyway, or at least residents do. Right? I know as much as I do from watching Grey's Anatomy. Hey, <laughs> so, so, onward state, I'll check it. Listen, man, uh, it, it's fascinating. So I'm looking at what uh, Kempachi uh, wow, 465 is saying. Walked into an Indian restaurant and the server was wearing gloves and keeping a distance when reading the menu. Uh, pizza shop only serving people outside the door. I mean, it's like, yeah, man, this, this is... Uh, Wow, like what a what a huge just what a what a world this is. Man, maybe some of this stuff will hold over for all of the flu seasons. <laughs> you know, every year, right? If pe- more people did this, we'd all be in better shape. So, like wow. I'm more interested in what's going on on the personal level with like um the conversations around like checking in and how the abrupt just breakdown of people's structures are affecting them having to be inside is this are affecting them just like emotional and mental um mm. and the benefits of it i'm saying i'm i'm really excited to see how I change and progress and things that I actually do because I have the time to that I've always been interested in doing or saying that I want to do and it just takes I've still been doing those things and working on myself in many different ways but now it's like it's it's on go like I just ordered a viola which is something I've been wanting to do since high school because I didn't have my own instrument but my my school I went to didn't have a music program when I got here, I decided I'd just teach myself again because I still have all my music books. Haven't done it. Wait, and then last night, I was on. just like, ship that to me. <laughs> so Wait, a, vi- a viola? Yeah, it's like a violin. It just has a different range. It doesn't yeah, no, no, it no, I got it. It's yeah, not yeah, the yeah. same. I what played the violin. The, what hmm? about the guitar right behind you? I know. See, string instruments is like my passion. I would have got a cello, Wait. but... I, that's too big, and I, yeah, I don't want to mess around with that. Um, but I will eventually. But I, I've, I've had a guitar for the longest. My brother's father got me my first guitar after playing the other two instruments, and for as long as I have it, I always say I should be a lot better at it. But I pick it up, and I just don't stick to it. I know enough. I can do some chords. I can play some songs, some picking patterns, strumming, and all of that. Um, but it's just. The viola is really what's crying. I watched some videos of it and I haven't listened to string music in a while. And I cried, okay? So that's where my heart is. I'm waiting on this viola and I'm about to start recording some stuff and uploading to YouTube. Hot cross buns first. <laughs> or I can start doing some of our, our music. Don't gotta worry about being fine and all that stuff. Yeah, you see, this Dude. is because of because of this. <laughs> okay. All right, so listen. So let me go back to this. Um, so you, so you're curious about how the ways in which this people will grow hiatus that the world is in, this pause that we're on, is going to have an impact on us in on all of us internally. Yes. Like what kinds of things is it going to give rise to and shift and shape and change yeah. and yeah it's it's for it's like i feel like um unless you're just really one of those people that have to distract yourself and you just do that like perpetually any with the more amount of time that goes on there has to be time like you can't escape your own mind and there are things that people excuse and don't face about themselves because it's just not a practice everything is academic everything is professional everything is out there and it's more of like Mm -hmm. friends like what jiggy likes to work on and what she talks about um and like what we share on social media and how we portray ourselves Mm -hmm. um but at at the end of the day when you go home by yourself you're not really happy so it's like those 
what, you know, what journey people are going to go on and the aspects of facing their self mm. and being comfortable with themselves. Cause like the yeah. feeling lonely and all of the, those things, like I was saying in our, our morning meetings, I'm not really experiencing because my days and my routine has kind of always been this. Um, and I'm, I'm like fine in my own company. There's always been days where it's like, I'm either going to see people or I'm not, <laughs> but I'm never bored or there's something I'm thinking about or interested in or just looking up. And it's just been, I've just been able to do that a lot more mm. in this amount of time. Oh yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I, I think that maybe, well, so a couple of things that are going to happen, right? Pe I think uh, so a lot of interesting or things depression like, will spike up or both it's it's or that's the, what i'm divorce, interested in <laughs> the divorce rate will, you know one thing they said in china in wuhan actually right after the curfew was lifted um the isolation was lifted the divorce rate spiked so lots of people are just sort of running out <laughs> wow, to divorce in court. no time <laughs> yeah well they, yeah, spent, yeah, they yeah. spent what three four weeks together <laughs> never leaving each other's side <laughs> yeah that, well that's yeah. when yeah. um michael and i were talking about the possibility of him working from home i was like well you do know that the entire eight hours that we work we cannot be in the same room because we will drive yeah. each other crazy <laughs> <laughs> well at least if he has to be quarantined that's a nice setup there's a structure for him to be away for at least this amount of time if there if that if it just so happened to also be during that shelter and Mm. yeah 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 no i i think it's it's actually quite a it's a it's a huge global experiment that's happening right now because you, you just have never had this kind of quarantining impact or you know these these kind of sociological changes that would happen across many different cultures over periods of time. And so, you know, we have an opportunity to study it and to really kind of try to get a sense of what it is and what it means. And like, man, it's, it's huge. It's really big. So, um, I'm also quite deeply curious as to see, even for me, you know, like for me, right? Like what I trying to watch the ways in which this is really having an impact on my psyche i'm still i think i'm still in shock in a way um what was yeah. the what was the um it wasn't a virus i think it was just uh maybe it was but it was through mosquitoes it was done in the caribbean zika zika zika, like zika? I think the uh, well, yeah. children being born with like misshaped heads. No, 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 no. That's different. That's or much different. No. I think Zika was malaria. <laughs> no, it's not malaria. No, no, you're right. You're right. No, you, no, you're right. Uh, I remember when joy. that. Yeah, I remember when that went through. That was it. Um, Haiti. It was having an impact on on fetuses and so on. Yeah. Well, then we're thinking um, of something. Guatemala, Nicaragua. Well, no, then we're thinking of something oh. different because what I'm thinking of okay. affected your joints. And I knew somebody. Yeah, no, that's like the like deng deng or as in Spanish is dengue fever. Yeah, something like that sounds about yeah. right. But when that came through uh, Haiti, I knew somebody who got it, and she was bedridden, uh, bedridden for like five or six days. She literally just couldn't leave. It was horrible. Dude, I I got dengue when I was in the in the living in Ecuador. Um. 30 years ago I had dengue fever I went it was there was like a really uh, a big um, yeah it was really prevalent in this area where I was and and I then I went down into the jungle and I just got it I mean just weren't gonna almost I was almost not not going to be able to keep from getting it and it was unbelievable um, and I never got Zika. treated. I mean, There's really no treatment. I just, you know, went went through. Hey, did um, she's joining. Did Arnica? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Cool. She'll be joining in a second. 
Zika, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. the Zika. That's the one. That, that was bad. Too. But it's crazy because I, I like I'm the kind of person who doesn't really fear these illnesses. Like I've been to Haiti. I can't even tell you how many times. Like six or seven times. I've never once <laughs> taken my malaria medication. At least the full prescription. Really? Never uh, once. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh no! I had to when I was in Nicaragua, and this is before I was good at taking pills. Terrible. When I that I, I had to. No, I I forget. I had to get like a shot before I went down. They were like, "Come back in six months for your second one." Never went back to get the. There second were one. options though. There were like three different choices. There was either one you took once a week or something. I had the one you had to take every day, and I dreaded it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I it do that with regular little... medicine. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, the days. I want to go back one day. I'm like, I want to go is, back to my is, uh, she'll, let's give her another minute. She should be joining us in the meantime. Hey, um, so listen, uh, yeah, L Lauren, I'm just looking at that comment, but it's because there are every other racist is it, every other. Asian is racist toward the Philippines. Um, yeah, that's not really true, but there are really negative. There's a there are systematic negative um, feelings toward the Philippines. Um, but you know, it's it's different, right? It's sort of it's like it's like in the West, right? So just think about the United States and how we think about different European cultures, right? Like we have a, we have stereotypes about Pol the Polish people. We have stereotypes about, and, and again, these have sort of abated a little bit, right? So people of, you know, if you're of my generation, you're sort of much more aware of what these are, but if you're not like, you know, you all like Joy and Jeff, you probably aren't nearly as connected to these as I am, but the stereotypes toward the Irish, right? But the stereotypes mm -hmm. toward the Irish are different than the ones toward the Scottish, right? And the pol stereotypes about the Poles are different than the stereotypes about Hungarians, right? So it really depends on where you grew up in the U.S. and the way we think about different cultures and so on. So it's like the same is true in Asia. Like every, you know, it's like there are all these like kind of little stereotypes and different ways that certain countries have toward other ones. And it's like it, it's just immensely complex. Uh, and so, you know, God, growing up, it was like I grew up in this area of the city where there were with there were just well in a city where there were lots of ethnic groups and everybody had their. It was the one thing that you just sort of thought about and said about every group. So, and you know, the crazy thing, I mean, here's one, like one is that Polacks, Polish people were really dumb and that Polish people, if you wore white socks and dress shoes, like brown or black shoes and you wore white socks with them, people would say, well, that was, you were, that was, you were being Polish. And, uh, and I, and then I got to Poland when I was in my thirties and I saw all these men wearing white socks and dress shoes. And I thought, Oh my God, this stereotype was, was it not a stereotype? I always thought it was a stereotype because I don't ever remember as a kid seeing any Polish people wearing white socks and dress shoes uh, until I got to Poland. Then I saw it. So I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you who was Polish or not. I have two good friends who are twins and they're both Polish. I, I couldn't look at them and be like, yeah, you're Polish. I just, maybe I just don't know enough about them. Hey, so, uh, Vit Nika Vivo, um, you're from Azerbaijan. And yeah, today is no, no use. And I, I know we were talking to, I was talking to when we had Maziar in class from Iran on, uh, on Tuesday, he was talking about that and about how the entire holiday to a great de deal is probably, will just, people won't be celebrating. And, and it's a very cool holiday. So, um, that's crazy. It's same, you know, in Colombia, I was talking to my Colombian friend today. There's a 
holiday next week that but everybody's on lockdown, at least in Bogota. Hey, Arna, is Arnica coming on? She is in the call. She did have some issues with her camera, so she had to restart. If you can't join us with um, audio, that's also fine if you just wanted to talk. Yeah, audio is fine. We can just do audio. Um, Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. I don't know. I restarted, and it still can't find my ca my camera, so I don't know what's going no, on there. Have... Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We have your name. So listen, what, what's happening in Berlin right now? Um, it's weird. It doesn't look that much different than pre-virus. Um, lots of people, I don't think, are taking the social distancing thing serious enough yet. Um, uh -huh. Lots and lots of people are home. Obviously, all schools are closed nationwide. So obviously lots of people have to stay home for childcare, but at the same time, there's emergency childcare for people in crucial, you know, sectors. And I work in a crucial sector. I work for the local municipality. And one of my colleagues yesterday had to go home um, at lunchtime because at her emergency daycare facility, some child had been in contact with somebody who might have ha had the coronavirus. And then of course that facility, that emergency daycare facility now is dead for the next two, three weeks. So Whoa. he's not working remotely. He says like, I can't do anything remotely. Like <laughs> all my files, everything is at the office. Like what, what should I do? So, yeah. so, so are people, so are, is the government forcing people? So the government is not, hey, wait, hang on, I'm going to start over. It sounds like the government is not forcing people into any kind of isolation or quarantine. No, not, no, well, quarantine, yes, if you are tested positive, yes, definitely positive, quarantine. Yeah. But um, there's no lockdown yet. I think... And are the cases... And and I I saw that there aren't that many cases, but are they are people thinking that if people continue to go out into the streets that the number of cases is going to increase? Um, well, the experts are thinking that. People seem to be thinking yes, we should definitely stay home. But I will just run this one more errand, you know. At the, we're kind of at yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah. Or why yeah. are there that many people on the street? Well, I myself are on the, are on the street right now, so why am I on the street? Um, there are also lots of, especially in Berlin, I don't know what, uh, whether that's the same in other big cities in Germany, but there have been loads and loads and loads of teenagers and maybe like 20-somethings who are out in the parks. You know, it's been nice weather lately, and they've mm. been sitting together in groups, and, you know, they have lots of time on their hands now. Um, yeah, and police are going over and saying like, hey, you know, like you really shouldn't be sitting in a cluster here, but um, it's not working so far. So basically they've been telling us, okay, we have to see the behavior of people over the weekend. And if you're not taking it seriously, then I'm expecting something like a, a compulsory mm -hmm. lockdown from Monday or maybe Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah that makes sense yeah i mean i think it's it's the same here um obviously there aren't that many students are gone in state college so they've all gone home but um my guess is that i mean you know students are still going on spring break in places you know and i heard that uh, yeah 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 there was a thing on the bbc with a video that's pretty mm -hmm. damaging actually yeah. Um, yeah. I think if those kids have, were my kids, I would remove my name from their birth certificate. <laughs> but uh, they've been waiting all of these years to go down to Florida. You're not going to stop me. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> my guess, it, I don't know. It would be really interesting to talk to some of our students in class. Um, are they going out and hanging out with their friends? We'll make sure we do that next week, like just to kind of find out like, well, what's happening? What are they doing? Well, Penn State um, had a really it, interesting time to have spring break in this virus because we had it before 
Like we had spring break before it was really that big of a concern in the United States. But I know like Millersville University of State School in Pennsylvania, their spring break is this week. And they extended their spring break and now they're going to be doing other things. So people are like, well, now I'm going to stay in Florida for an extra week because I can. And it's like, what? Yeah. why are you doing this to yeah. yourself? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, Arnica, so is... um. Okay, so the government has not imposed a lockdown, mm-hmm. but they are, but schools are, are restaurants open? Um, limited hours. They can only open between six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the evening. Uh, uh-huh. We were all wondering whether the virus gets like more dangerous after 6 p.m., but it's most probably just because it's easier to control. Yeah. I guess, yeah. I don't think. Um, yeah. Lots of restaurants have just plain shut because they either they don't have guests or because they're saying, look, without the evening business, this is not uh, financially feasible, then it's better to, to just close and take a, a break instead of opening up and buying produce and stuff like that um, just for, for lunchtime. Mm. What about... um? Oh, yeah, and you're, you're not allowed to sit inside anymore. If you sit inside, it's like you have to have two meters, is it two meters now or one and a half? No, one and a half Whoa. meters in between tables. But it, it's changing by the hour. Well, so. oh. well the, the most important question, I guess, would be, is there toilet paper in the stores? <laughs> um, people do buy a lot more of that. It's kind of like we're making fun of people. Oh, look, they're hoarding toilet paper. Um, but it's then like when we go to the supermarket, it's like, oh, maybe I'll just take one packet, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when, when I was at the supermarket, only the most expensive toilet paper was left over. But there was still some. So <laughs> it's not quite, we're, we're not fighting each other quite yet. Uh, I have yeah, a chat but, here to see it. Uh, it's bad. All, all the most, all the most expensive stuff is still there. So the most expensive pasta is still avail- available, but the cheap pasta is gone. Um, the cheap fresh milk is gone, but you can have the like grass-fed um, alpine milk still. You know. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Same here. I I saw that here in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. People aren't going to hoard expensive things. Yeah. Wow, man. Um, so I find, it, I find it quite difficult because I still have to go to work, but the department I work for at the moment is, um, well, our work is basically canceled. So it's a lot of hurry up and wait. We're just sitting there waiting for a phone call for the next task to complete. And then it has to be completed like really like yesterday. And then again, we're like just sitting and okay, what, what could we do? What, what could we archive? What could we, what kind mm. of... Um, Stuff that otherwise doesn't get done because we're too busy can we do until the next mini emergency happens and meanwhile my eight-year-old daughter is home and she has a huge list of uh, tasks to complete and of course when i'm not home she's not going to do that so right. i come home <laughs> and she's been playing all day and then i have to switch to teacher and meanwhile, yeah. I also have to, I don't know, cook dinner and do all the rest of things. So, yeah, I'm, I think a lot of parents are feeling the strain. Yeah, oh, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Man, what a, what a just a, a, a fascinating experiment in sociolo- sociological sort of sociological processes, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think I would prefer not to have been part of it but yeah yeah, yeah same here same here um, oh my daughter is just saying that, uh, is that german telecom yeah, yeah german telecom has sold movements of all their customers like, to researchers the mobile phone movements oh really yeah yeah whoa whoa that's fascinating now it'll be I would I'm I'm so curious to see the the data that you know the reports that come out of this a year or two down the road. 
um, you know, to see what it is, how human beings responded, what our behavior was. Mm. Um, because, you know, you, you we can't know, right? And I can't know. I, I just don't understand what's going on around me. You know, like in my neighborhood all day long, many more people are walking. Dogs are all getting walked. Dogs that I never see getting walked are getting walked. <laughs> Because people have nothing else to do but to go outside for a walk. And so, okay. So it's good for the dogs, for sure. Well, people here walk anyway. I mean, I've, yeah. I've never owned a car in my life. It was never necessary. A car here, where, yeah. where, where I lived, it was more of a nuisance or a burden that would have been a positive yeah. advantage well, or anything. Well, here it's... So. Yeah, so in the U.S. it's very positive because mm. people probably get more exercise. Uh, but they I also might eat more. When when so. I when I visit my my host family in America, my husband would take me by car to a walking park to walk. Yeah. I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We do that here, you know. You wouldn't even find me dead in New York. Actually, if they found me in New York, I'd probably be dead. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's speaking crazy. of York, um, I, th I, this is not a confirmed case, but there is supposedly a case of the virus at um, York Hospital. They airlifted mm -hmm. a person from Gettysburg to York Hospital, and wow. and it's interesting because I know somebody who works at the hospital who may have been in contact with this person, and I know that mm -hmm. she has a son who goes on like you're not supposed to go on play dates right now, but like, what yeah. are parents supposed to do when they're at work? <laughs> Yeah, dude. Now nah, it's really crazy. Hey, um, all right. Hey, thanks, thanks, Arnica. Um, I was, I've been really curious to see what's happening. I in in Germany in particular. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we'll let we'll definitely st check in later. And I think I think this is a good place to just cut the the podcast. No, hey, I by the way, Arnica, you thought. should know all the the chocolate that you sent to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> because I was going to do the podcast, the the piece about candy, um, about chocolate after spring break, <laughs> it's still in my possession. So Joy and Jeff and Stream Team, I might just have to eat it all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be dead to me. I'll I'll spread I'll spread I'll see you. The two of you are in state college, so I'll make sure you get some. <laughs> Long as six feet um, apart. We have to drop it on my doorstep. The rest bro. of the stream team won't. All right, all right. So listen, maybe okay. let's just cut the stream nope. here. Nope. I don't we have, have any final, final comments. Okay, Sam doesn't. Joy, do final you have thoughts. any? Uh, I'm down for the ride. That's it. I feel like Dude. natural selection. Okay, just another form. And in the end, maybe we'll come out a better human race. <laughs> All right. My final thought. Yeah. Senate Bill 3398 is also known as the <clears throat> Earn It Act is a wool is a sheep in or sorry, is a wolf in sheepskin <sighs> bill in which they're trying to say that they're trying to protect online child <clears throat> sexual exploitation prevention but really they're trying to take away our rights as individuals, not because children should be trafficked. Of course not. I'm, no one would say that, but they are trying to block us from having end to end encryption, which is how we're able to safely secure our information online so that companies yeah. can't access the information or horrible people who steal your personal information, like a credit card, your social security number, all of that information. They can't find that in an end to end encryption. So, um, Write your congresspeople, write your senators, write your congressmen and women. Tell them to not pass this your bill. Your local folks. Because if they yeah. do, right. say goodbye to the First Amendment, and we're going to be more like an author authoritarian government over here, which, hey, we've already yeah. been since 2001 because of the Patriot Act. Man, th that's like... Drop the mic, that's, Jeff. That's a consideration. No. All right, Arnica, any final thoughts from you? Don't watch zombie apocalypse movies. Just don't do it. <laughs> I just I just read a watching. book. I just read I just read a book about a virus that basically wiped out the um, like a novel. It was a novel uh, that wiped out most of the world's population. And it was a bad time to read this. So mm. just don't do it. 
Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> it's good that you say that. I was actually thinking of trying to watch a movie this weekend. That, Yo, Outbreak. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you on Netflix. Sam, Sam, right? Sam, Wait, no. Sam's gonna watch a movie. I was gonna. Sam doesn't I was watch TV. Gonna watch See, this, this is his journey. Called, <laughs> the, the Stephen King series called The Stand, but uh, Lori read the book years ago and i was thinking hey maybe we'll just watch that but i think it's better if i don't i'll take arnica's advice all right y'all so listen peace uh we'll be in class on tuesday afternoon at three o'clock um make sure the niche is with us hey thanks for calling in arnica yeah, thanks Joy, for inviting Jeff. me thanks thank you uh, we'll see you all see you all tuesday ciao. all right bye. ciao